Hawaii is one of the most stunning places on Earth. But getting from A to B can be a challenge. So the island is taking on its biggest infrastructure project yet. It is the day some thought would never come, the opening of Honolulu's rail system. That's right, Honolulu officially has its own fully autonomous mass transit system that's the first of its kind in the US. And while this was a cause for celebration for many, the project wasn't exactly on the fast track getting to this point. Building across such a diverse landscape isn't easy. The $10 billion scheme has now essentially doubled from its original budget. And it's seriously behind schedule. With so many problems derailing this project over the years, many wonder if it's still worth keeping it on track. Some of the most scenic road trips in the entire US are on Hawaii's highways, as they steadily wind their way through paradise. But while the roads may offer epic views, the congestion on them can cause major backups. Until the recent opening of the skyline, Hawaii didn't really have access to alternative forms of transport like trains, for either passengers or for cargo. But that wasn't always the case. Throughout the late 1800s and early 1900s, the state did have various rail systems, largely for the purposes of transferring supplies. But those have all since shut down due to rising costs or aging infrastructure. Until now, Hawaii's rail systems only existed for tourism. While several ideas for additions were pushed throughout the years, none ever really gained enough steam. Then, as road traffic began to increase around the mid-2000s, particularly in Honolulu, officials began circulating the ideas once again. And in 2008, voters finally approved an idea for a 32km elevated railway from the suburbs of Oahu to the bustling capital Honolulu. The $5 billion project promised to alleviate congestion and reduce emissions while providing a faster alternative to the bus system by 2020. Ultimately, the finalised path will now be a 30km two-track structure with 19 stations. An additional segment will include two more stations that will further extend it in the future. On average, it'll travel 48km an hour, cutting some commuting times in half and eliminating traffic by 40,000 cars a day. That'll come as a much-needed reprieve, as Hawaii ranks as the worst state to drive in thanks to traffic, gas prices and road conditions. Officials project around 100,000 passengers are going to ride the train each day. It'll also be the first autonomous and driverless train in the entire US. That means cheaper, safer and more efficient operation of the cars, as it can eliminate human error, which is often the main reason behind accidents and delays. The railway itself will be elevated because, in a landscape with such varying topography, it's a bit easier to build over rather than straight through. There'll be more than 5,000 precast concrete segmental bridges. With each segment weighing around 50 tonnes, connecting them is a huge feat of engineering. A twin unslung girder is used to raise and then complete each segment. It's a type of trolley that moves along a system of parallel beams carrying materials. Span by span, the parts are lifted onto a cart using a crane, where they are then aligned and then bonded using an adhesive into their final position. The elevated design normally allows construction to be cheaper, as these types of tracks are often lighter and narrower than standard or underground tracks. It's also faster and safer, while still allowing activities to go on below. But those benefits haven't really materialised for the skyline. In fact, it's seriously behind schedule. The initial timeline had it completing in 2020, but it's now expected to finish in 2031. As construction began, the project faced a myriad of contract issues and lawsuits regarding the assessment of archaeological sites. And on top of that, transit authorities spent hundreds of millions of dollars to relocate electrical lines when they realised a section of the tracks would pass too close to them. Then, in 2018, concerns about cracks in the hammerhead piers were raised. Officials assumed they were caused by shrinkage in the concrete rather than by the tracks themselves. Over the next few years, the cracks continued to expand, so workers made repairs on 21 piers. Adding to all that, reports in 2021 stated that some of the wheels of the train cars were found to be too narrow in parts of the track where lanes crossed together, 
possibly presenting a major safety issue if not fixed. Replacing them would be expensive and time-consuming, so instead, a short-term fix using temporary welds to plug the difference in space was used. We reached out to Honolulu Authority of Rapid Transit and Hitachi Rail for an interview, but they declined our request. With so many setbacks, it's little surprise that the project exceeded its initial budget and that the first leg of the skyline didn't open until June 2023. For many, it was a long time coming. Despite a not-so-great public track record, over 9,000 people excitedly rode it on the first day. A lot of excitement downstairs, and the line is so long, but people are so mellow, a lot of patience. Oh, I'm super duper excited about it. Party train. <laughs> now that the first segment is finally welcoming riders, the perception of what it can offer Hawaiians is already changing. Some people loved it, others got motion sick, and some have called for later trains as they currently only run to 7pm. But it's not over yet. With about 40% of the project remaining, there's still a long way to go with the track, eventually connecting into downtown Honolulu. As local residents and businesses are covering the cost of budget overruns, many are left wondering if the benefits will really be worth it. Only time will tell if Hawaii's new railway will join the ranks of other infrastructure projects around the world that were kind of hated during construction, but became loved once they completed. You can learn more about this and other topics on our channel over on the World's Best Construction Podcast, available right now wherever you get your podcasts. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.